So you want to be the Warren Buffett of Asia? I don't want to be the Warren Buffett of Asia. I don't want to be anybody. I just admire Warren Buffett. The models Warren Buffett does is very interesting, it's very long term. But Warren Buffett's got an economy like America that blessed him. We've now got Asia. The, the, I think there's a tectonic shift, economic tectonic shift to Asia now. now we are Asia centric. So maybe with our little Coca Cola's now powers that we have, this these companies can grow to be huge Coca-Colas with a bigger footprint in Asia as Warren Buffett grew their Coca-Colas and their sea candies and their whatever furniture stores he had in America. So that's the only comparison. And the difference between Warren Buffett and I, there's a big difference. I've paid dividends since day one, 1986. Warren Buffett did not. Away. More with Malaysian tycoon Francis Yeo of YTL in just a moment. Managing Asia, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Managing Asia. My guest this week turned his family business into a multi-billion dollar empire. He's YTL's Francis Yeo. He was ranked by Fortune magazine as one of the most powerful and influential business personalities in Asia. Tanshri, you're a deeply religious man. How has religion shaped your management style? I always say all the 6,000 personnel in YTL have got to have three degrees. First degree, that's shocking. It's, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's funny that I put it that way, but actually it meant that they have to master three languages. One, the language of God that leads to integrity and morality. The second language they have to master is English. Or in China, my people, they have to articulate Mandarin on the vision and develop the process to fulfill this vision. They have to articulate as a leader. The third is the language of machines, which is IT, computer, WiMAX, or, or, or uh, equipment to get the process through. So they have to master these three languages. But first is God in that order. So the morality and the integrity bit is very, very important. Today YTL is still controlled by your family, the Yo family. I understand you still consult your father when it comes yes. to important decisions. Yes. What, what, what's the most valuable advice he's given you? The most valuable advice given me is number one, he wears power very lightly, he's very humble, and he can surrender his leadership very early uh, when I came back. And I tell you why, Christine, because I volunteered at 16 years old to work as hard as him because there was an economic crisis at that time, oil prices, 1971-73. We had very little profit. When prices go up 100%, we almost went bust. So I volunteered to get out of school and plug with him like my grandfather and my father. And he said, you know, that's the most stupid thing you can do because I cannot out hard work my grandfather or him. What they do not have is the academic education of engineering. He said, you got to go and get a degree, uh, engineering degree, set a good example to your other siblings, get them all to be engineers, and then we have a different footprint. But he is a rock. He's a solid like a rock. We always test every deal with him. Whatever we do, if all the brothers, sisters, and the board agrees, we always consult him. And if he says, that's great. That means that deal will be fantastic. When it comes to recruitment, I understand you set high standards for relatives wanting to join a company, yes. insisting on at least an honours degree in engineering or something similar. Yeah. Why take such a Double hard degree. approach? Double degree. In our case, it was honours degree in engineering or relevant uh, fields that are uh, uh, relevant to the business. The next generation, double degrees. And I tell you what, Christine, it's unbelievable because this fourth generation have tasted wealth. And it's not easy for a uh, uh, generation that tested well to be that hardworking. On their own, most of them have gone to Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial College, and all the best, London School of Economics, all of them. On their own, and super first-class honours. I am very, very pleased. So I've got, I've got a nice problem. I've got very, very smart next generation coming in. And I, 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 that's a, a nice problem to have. How do you keep and retain talent within your company? Like I say, just uh, master the three languages. Always, always pay for the best of the best of the best. We never stinge on that. I've always known people are assets. Don't ever take your eyes off uh, people. So forever, I've learned this people. So I'm also a Christian. I do not like to sack people because it destroys people. You've never life. sacked people. I've never sacked people. Neither do I overhire. That's the point. So when we hire, 
people that is very stringent. So what happens do you do with somebody who doesn't perform? So far they have performed. You look at all my people who are stuck with me. Most of them, some of them have stayed with me for 20, 25 years. And it's not a joke, Christine, because they've kept staff options. They are directly, literally my neighbor. I live in quite a good area, <laughs> and they leave a stone throw away my staff. You're paying them too well. No, it's the stock. <laughs> it's the dividend of the stock and the stock. They've done very well believing in the company. And most of them have turned to be senior advisors, like minister mentor types. And they are the ones that are giving advice as mentors to the next generation. So that's how we've kept quite a lot of uh, talents uh, in the company. And the turnover is very low, very low. I understand that the company has kept a museum of mistakes. Yes. Share with us some of the mistakes you've made. <laughs> Well, when you are young, you always want to do uh, businesses. Uh, you, you think it's so exciting, like retail. I was so excited when I, I, I bought a brand called Rossignol. I was an agent of the Rossignol, a French brand, and I love tennis. So, wow, I can imagine Rossignol skiing equipment we made in Asia cheaper, uh, tennis rackets and T-shirts will be able to make a huge money out of this agency. Wrong. Uh, that is a difficult business, you know. It's better to own a shopping center than to be in that retail. <laughs> so there's a museum mistake there. And then, then some of my brothers make mistakes like, gosh, there was a trend when people were producing latex, latex gloves. And they said that's the best business ever. That business kind of like imploded quite, quite quickly. And we have a few tanks of this latex thing kept in a museum to remind everybody, do not go into an area that has nothing to do with infrastructure. No fancy things that doesn't use our engineering brain, okay? So now we are never in pharmaceuticals, not in plantations, and all of that. And finally, you're 55 years old. Yeah. What are you doing about succession planning? Who are you grooming to take over you one day? Look at Sarai, the CEO is John. He's one of the best CEOs on this earth. So he stays as CEO. Uh, in my Wessex water is Colin Scallet. Uh, is the CEO there. He, he runs that. We are, I am the MD of the group, but my job really is to make sure the right CEOs run every operation, whether family members or not. Our job is to make sure that we have the best people running every businesses globally. You haven't quite answered my question. Who are you grooming to take over you one day? Oh, we can't, we can't groom uh, in that way. I'm still only 55. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still quite young, I mm -hmm. think. So Very my young. father is still a chairman, he's 80. So we're still talking a generation yet. So I, I've seen no push yet from them. I've not heard anything rumbling from my shareholders or the family that I'm past my age or past my prime or whatever. But when I get that, I will know. And then I will come and tell you who it is and when. Yeah, like all things like GE and uh, all great companies, we, ha we have got succession plans, but we know how to do them. We have a family accord, and if the family have to join, very strict discipline degrees and what they have to go through. They have to go and learn all the, all the learning curves, very strict ways before they get up to be considered as a leader. And that's a long way away. That's quite a long, many years. So they're learning the ropes now. And I've been speaking with Malaysian tycoon Francis Yeo of YTL. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Join us again next week for more CEO insights only here on CNBC. I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching.